Hello and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today, I'm so excited because we are going to be doing birds. Now, I love birds. You may not know this, but my name is Robin. So I have been collecting and feeding birds for as long as I can remember. I love this time of year when spring is coming because all the birds come to my yard, they start building nests, and I see so many different colorful birds. I'm hoping that you'll enjoy this project. We're gonna need some watercolors today. We're going to need a pair of scissors. We're gonna be doing a collage, so we're gonna be cutting. We're gonna need a glue stick and of course a Sharpie marker. Now I'm gonna recommend that you have more than one piece of watercolor paper today. And if you want to, if you have some colored background paper, that will be a really fun idea to glue your pictures onto a background paper. But if you don't, you could just use watercolor paper. So go ahead and gather up those items and then meet me back here and we're gonna start drawing a beautiful bird collage. Can't wait to show you. Well, let's get ready to make our beautiful blooming bird project. We are going to be using watercolor paper today. So you're gonna need two sheets of watercolor paper, one for the actual bird and one for the background piece of paper. We're also going to need a set of watercolors and a brush. We're gonna need some water, a pair of scissors, a glue stick, a pencil and a Sharpie marker. Lastly, you're going to need two napkins or paper towels. So go ahead and gather all those items up and meet me back here once you have your supplies ready. Welcome back. We are going to begin by moistening our watercolor set. So I'm going to take both of my watercolor papers, move them off to the side for now, and I'm going to get my bowl of water and my paintbrush, and I'm gonna start adding some water to my colors. Now, the first colors I'm going to wet are my blues. I'm gonna be using some blues and purple, if you have purple, pink, and you'll notice as I'm setting my brush on the watercolor set, I'm not stirring, I'm just tapping my colors on. Now I don't have purple in my watercolor set, but I do have pink so I can make my own purple later. If you have purple, don't forget to put some water on that as well. And then I'm also gonna be using green. So I'm gonna put some water on my green. And then we're gonna be making some warm colors. So I'm gonna to need to wet my yellow and my orange and my red. Now that my paint is wet, I'm gonna lay that off to the side just to start getting moist. And that water is gonna kind of loosen up those paint pigments. And now I'm gonna to begin to get ready to paint. So I only need one piece of watercolor paper for right now. The other paper will come to later. We're gonna take this piece of paper and fold it in half. So I'm gonna lay it horizontal on my table, which is long, and I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna get my scissors and cut it apart. So we're gonna be making two different colors today. We're gonna to be making one set of colors that are cool colors and one set of colors that are warm. So for now, I'm gonna work on my cool colors. So taking my paintbrush and water only, nothing else, I'm gonna wet this paper. Now, as you're putting water with your paintbrush onto the paper, you want to be gentle and make sure that you don't scratch the paper with this metal part of the paintbrush. That's called the ferrule. We don't want to scratch our paper. So I'm just quickly, quickly putting water on my paper and you're gonna notice something's happening to my paper. What is happening to my paper? It is starting to curl up. Can you see that? So what I do is once my paper's wet, I flip it over and then I quickly paint the other side. So now my paper will start to flatten out. Now I wanna make sure I'm not leaving any puddles, but I also wanna make sure that all of my paper is wet. So I'm gonna go around the corners 
making sure all my corners are wet and you'll see my paper's laying down now. And I'm gonna move my brush very gently, taking any leftover water and spreading it out so that my paper has a lot of moisture on it. Okay, now let's start with some warm colors. My first color, my lightest color in my pizza is yellow. So I'm gonna really twirl my brush very gently onto the yellow and I'm gonna start popping in some yellow on my paper. If you'll notice, I'm just putting a little bit more water and I'm gonna just keep tapping my brush and filling my background paper with yellow first. And once I have a lot of yellow on my paper, I can wiggle my brush around and start to fill in those gaps. I can concentrate the yellow in some areas so it's a little brighter. And in some areas, it might be a little lighter. And some is brighter, a little more vivid. Then I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna move on to the color orange. So now I'm gonna go in and tap in some orange onto my paper and the orange is gonna mix in with that yellow and it's gonna make some really pretty golden colors. Now, once I've got some orange on my paper, my next color I'm gonna play with is red. So I'm gonna stir my brush into the red. And I'm gonna now add some red into my paper. Now, if your paint set came with pink, pink would be another color that you could add in. So you'll have to look and see if you have some pink and then you can go in and mix some pink in. So I have some pink in mine. So I'm gonna stir in some pink and I'm gonna to start to dab in some pink as well. You'll notice the pink does not stay pink for long because once it mixes in with that yellow, then you get actually kind of a bright, oh, it's almost like a rose red. Now I'm gonna leave this paper over to the edge of my work area. And now I'm gonna work on a cool set of colors. I'm gonna scoochie scoochie this over off to the side. And I'm gonna get my napkin. Remember I asked you to get more than one napkin. Use this napkin to kind of dry my work area. And now I'm gonna set my other half of my watercolor paper. I'm gonna use my paintbrush. And yes, I know my water is a little murky and dirty from my last paint set. So if you wanna stop and pause your video and change your water, you can, but I'm just gonna go right in with it. It's not that dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and wet the front of my watercolor set again. My watercolor paper, I mean making sure I work pretty quick because you can see it's starting to curl up again. Oh no, quickly, quickly flip it over. And now I'm gonna wet the front. I guess this would actually be the back of my paper. I wanna spread that water out so I don't have any giant puddles all the way to the edge. You notice I'm working pretty fast too. I can see in some of my areas, my paper is a little dry. So I have to add a little bit more moisture from the middle of my paper and scooch it over. And now I'm gonna work in with my cooler colors. So I'm gonna start with blue. Now my paint set has two different shades of blue, but that's okay if yours doesn't. Just work with whatever blue you have in your paint set. I'm gonna kind of wiggle my brush around and spread that blue. Then I'm gonna go in just like I did with the yellow and add a little bit more of that same shade of blue. So I have a few areas that are a little brighter blue. 
I'm gonna rinse out my brush. Now I'm gonna go in with my other shade of blue. Now, if you don't have a dark and a light shade of blue, you can just add a second coat of your blue in some areas to make it darker. Now your set might come with purple. Mine does not come with purple because it comes with pink. So if you have purple, this is a great time to go in and put some purple into your picture. Now, since I don't have purple, I'm gonna rinse my brush very well and I'm gonna go in and grab my pink. And I'm gonna tap some pink into some of my dark blue. So you'll notice when I tap my pink into the dark blue, I get a really pretty purple. So red and blue do not really make a very nice shade of purple. It's kind of dark and it looks almost brown. So I think pink is a better color to mix with blue to make purple. And by the way, you don't have to have purple. Another color that would be really pretty in this color scheme would be green. So if you would rather do green in your background, you can do that as well. So I'm gonna stick with my pinks and purples and blues because those are my favorite colors, but you could go in with green. Let me show you what the green would look like and the green and the blue together will make a really pretty turquoise. Now green and purple together make brown. So you don't really wanna put a lot of green on top of your purple because you'll get kind of a brown shade. But you can see that if I put concentrate that green in some of my blue areas, I can make a really pretty turquoise. All right, now I have two papers that need to dry. So I want you to go find a sunny location if you have a sunny location outside that you can set your paper in to dry. And then once your paper is dry, come on back and we will start to create our picture. So I'm gonna go set mine outside to dry. Oh, one more thing before you leave. If you want to, you can take a napkin and crumple it up into a little ball like this. And you can actually make some texture or patterns on your paper. So watch this, I forgot to tell you about this. This is kind of fun. So I'm gonna take my napkin and I'm just going to go in on my warm shade and I'm gonna start tapping very softly with my napkin to make some texture. So it's grabbing some of the wet colors and it's leaving a little pattern behind. Now, if you're ready to do the other paper, you're not gonna wanna use the same napkin. You're gonna wanna put that napkin off to the side and use a different piece of napkin. So I just tear a little bit more, crinkle it up into a little ball. Now I can go in and tap a few patterns into my other paper. So now I'm gonna set my papers off to dry. Then I'll meet you back here when your papers are dry and we'll get ready to create our collage. Welcome back. Time to find your second piece of watercolor paper. We're gonna get in and take our paintbrush and paint some grass and some stems that we're going to be adding some butterflies and flowers and fun things too later. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm gonna get some of my watercolor paint. I'm gonna be using the green. And I'm going to start from the very bottom and take my paintbrush, holding my paper so it doesn't move. And I'm just gonna flick my paintbrush up from the bottom. So I'm just kind of flicking it up, 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 up make some grass. And then I'm going to add also, I think I'm gonna mix, add in a little of my yellow green too. So I can add some different shades of grass. Now, if you don't have a yellow green, you could rinse your brush off and dip your brush into your yellow and then place it back into your green and you'll get the same shade of a yellow green. Once I've done my grass, I'm gonna pull my brush from the bottom up 
to make some stems for my flowers. Now I'm gonna be creating three different flowers today. You might wanna make more than three, but to start off with, we'll do three. So I'm gonna have three stems and saving some room for my bird. I'm gonna rinse out my brush and move my watercolors off to the side. I don't need this anymore. I'm also going to pick up my paper and scoot that off to the side so it can dry. So I'm going to bring my paper out so it can dry in the sunshine or in front of a heater vent. If you don't have any sun right now. And then we will go in with our scrap paper that I'm going to pick up from outside, the ones that are painted, and we'll start to create our bird. Welcome back. Now we're going to be using our scissors, a pencil, and a Sharpie marker for doing our design work. And we're gonna be working with our two colored pieces of paper. So to begin with, I want you to decide whether you want to have a warm colored bird with cool colored wings or a cool colored bird with warm colored wings. And by the way, the beak, is going to be the same color as your wings. So if you do a warm color bird, you would have a cool color beak and wings. I'm gonna be doing a cool color bird. So I'm gonna be starting with my cool colors. I'm gonna flip my paper over and we're gonna get ready to design our bird. So if you look here, my bird is kind of like the shape of a teardrop. You see that pointed on one end, rounded on the other. So in order to make my bird facing this direction, I'm gonna actually be drawing the head of my bird on this side so that when I flip it over, he'll be facing this way. Now, if you would like to have your bird facing the opposite direction and you want him facing this direction, then you would want to make your head of your bird on this side. All right, let's begin with our pencil. And we're gonna start by drawing a large smile from one end of the paper to the other. So I'm gonna start over here and I'm just gonna draw a big smile on my paper. We're drawing on the back of our paper. So if we make a mistake, you don't even have to erase. No one's ever gonna see it. So here's my big smile. It's kind of like the bottom of an ice cream bowl. It goes from one side of the paper all the way to the other. And then I'm going to make the head of my bird on this side because I want my bird to be facing that direction. So I'm just gonna make a round curve here for the head of my bird. My paper's a little wrinkly, so I'm gonna have to push my hands down to hold it down. And then I'm gonna make my bird go this direction toward a little skinny point on the end. So I'm just gonna kind of make a little swoop of a curve. Now, if you don't wanna do that, and you just wanna have a round bird like this, that's more like a football shape, you can do that as well. It's really up to you. And if you need to change your bird and make him chubbier, you can do that. You can round the head out a little better. So once you've designed your bird, then you're gonna take your scissors and cut your bird out. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut mine out. You cut yours out. Save your scraps. We're gonna be using those for something else later. So as I cut off my scraps, now when I flip my picture over, this is usually where I notice there might be a little bump or a little curve that I need to trim off. So you can trim any parts that don't feel smooth to you. And depending upon what shape you made at the end, you can make your tail more pointed if you want to. So here's my pretty little bird. I'm gonna move my scraps over to the corner because I'll use those later to create a flower and maybe even a butterfly. So here's my bird. Well, the next part is to design some wings. So I'm gonna go over with this piece of paper, my other color, and I'm gonna take my paper and the first thing I'm going to do is cut it in half. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and snip it all the way across. And you're gonna decide which piece you want for your wings and which piece will you save later for maybe some flowers. 
So I'm going to kind of hold them both up and see which colors I like better because mine kind of has a little variety of all the different colors. I think I'm going to go with this one. Move my scraps off to the side. And now I'm going to flip this over to make my wing. So to make my wing, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to draw a line from one corner to the other to divide my paper. And then this will be one wing and this will be the other. Now the wing shape already, if you look right here, there's already a point. All I have to do is round this side out and bring it back. So that can be my one wing shape. See how I did that? So there's a point here. I just went up, rounded it and brought it back. And then if I turn my paper, here's the other point. On the opposite end, I can do the same thing. Just round the side out, bring it back to a point. And now I have two wings. So I'm gonna cut my paper right down that little diagonal line. And then I'm gonna cut my wing out. Save your scraps. One of these scraps is going to end up being the beak for your bird. Here's one wing. And here's my other wing. So there's my other wing. These will end up being my bird's beak later. So let's set it up and see what it looks like. So I have to decide which wing I want in front, and which wing do I want in the background? Now, once I decide which wing I like for the front wing and which one I want for the back wing, then I'm going to go in and cut a pattern out. So I'm gonna take one of the wings and I'm going to snip a few little cuts out of it. So let me show you how I do that. I'm just going to take my scissors right here at the bottom and I'm going to cut a little sideways diagonal cut. You see that little cut right there? But if you notice, it doesn't show up on the paper. See how it doesn't really show up? So what I need to do is actually cut another little piece right next to it so a tiny triangle falls out. Now once that little triangle falls out, then you can see the separation for my feathers. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna cut a little snip. Don't cut it too far because you don't want the whole wing to fall off. And I'm gonna cut another little piece right next to it. And when that little triangle piece falls out, you'll see that now you can kind of see my wing pattern. And you can do three or four of these little trims across the bottom to make your wing. And you can do the same thing on the wing that will be in the background too. You're only gonna need a couple on the bottom side of this one. So you wanna do the same thing. Now you can see, if I put it behind here, my wing shows up. So once I'm finished with that, it's time to glue my wings down. So I'm gonna get my glue stick. And I'm going to put some glue on the back of this wing right here where the shoulder of the wing is. Now, I don't wanna put it on top of my bird. I'm gonna move it over here to my work area. And I am using a purple glue stick. You don't have to use this kind, but it shows up nice when I'm showing you how to glue. I don't have to glue this area here, just kind of where the rounded shoulder would be, saving room for the face of my bird. And I'm gonna put my little wing whichever direction you want it to go. And then I'm going to glue this one. Now to glue this one, I'm actually gonna be gluing the back of my bird, not the wing. So I'm gonna flip my bird over, figure out where I want my wing. So I'm gonna want my wing to kind of poke up like this from the background. So now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna lift this up and figure out right where I want to place my glue on my bird. And 
sometimes I have to adjust it. You'll see what I mean when I stick it down and I flip it over. You might need to kind of bring it higher or lower. Once I'm happy with this placement of my wing, my bird is almost complete. I also need a beak. So I'm going to go back in to my wing scraps. And I'm going to find a nice triangle shape that I can use for my beak. This one would work great. Look at that. But I also have this piece and that can become a triangle. This might be a better color. So that's another one. And I have this one and this one has some really beautiful colors in it also. So when you find a piece that you want, you just wanna make sure that your beak is pretty wide. You don't want a really skinny triangle. So I'm gonna trim this one a little bit and make a nice wide triangle. And I can tuck that under here and see if I like that color. Now I'm gonna experiment with this one and see if I like a lighter color. So I'm gonna cut all the extra scraps off I don't need. That beak is a little wide, so I'm gonna make it a little skinnier. And then I'm gonna try this color and see if I like that color better. So I think I'm gonna go with this brighter color. I think that shows up very beautiful. I think I'm gonna go with that color this time. And then to glue it down, I'm gonna flip my bird over. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue right on the end of my bird's face. And then I'm not gonna glue it down yet. I wanna flip it back over and I'm gonna carefully set my bird's face so that the beak is poking out and hold it down with my fingers. I think that turned out nice. What do you think? All right, so now that my bird is done, I'm gonna go in and use my Sharpie marker and make some beautiful patterns in my bird. So look at this fun bird here. I did some swirls and I made a cute little eye. So when you're designing your bird, your bird does not have to have his or her eye open. You could make the eye closed. You do not have to outline the bird the way I did mine. You could make a pattern like this. You could make polka dots on your bird. You could do stripes on your bird. You can do straight lines, wavy lines. You do not have to separate the head of the bird from the body the way I did mine. So I separated the head from the body. So I could do two different patterns, but you don't have to. You could make it all one solid one. So inside here, what kind of pattern do you want to do? Maybe you want to do some small polka dots or hearts or swirls. I want you to create something fun with your Sharpie marker. And as you're designing your body, you want the pattern on your wing to be different. So I'm gonna to have to figure out what I wanna do for my wing. Right now, these remind me of cinnamon rolls because I'm hungry. Do you like cinnamon rolls? I do. Or maybe there's snail shells and I'm not hungry for snail shells. Once I've designed my pattern for my body, now I can create a pattern for my wings. So maybe you want to do flowers or stars, or polka dots, wavy lines. Maybe you want to write some words like tweet, tweet, tweet. You could combine patterns as well. So you could do polka dots and flowers. And you don't have to do patterns on the little 
small short parts that might be a little harder to draw in, but if you want to, you can just draw something really simple, like a wavy line, scribbles. And whatever you do on your front wing, you can match it on the back wing the same way, or you could do a different pattern. Once your bird is done, you want to separate the beak. You can do that with a little line. Now I'm gonna move my bird off to the side. And now I'm gonna go in and design some flowers and maybe even a butterfly. So for my flowers, I remember that I painted three stems. So I'm gonna need three flowers. I'm gonna find some of my scrap paper. And I'm gonna start with a blue flower. So I'm going to cut a chunk off of my end. So I'm gonna go like this and cut a big chunk, kind of like a little square or rectangle. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna draw the letter U. So I'm gonna make a big U that takes up all of the paper. And then I'm gonna find the center right up here at the top. I'm gonna to find the center and I'm gonna draw an upside down fat V, upside down. Then I'm gonna connect it on this side and connect it on this side and it forms the letter W. Now I've just drawn my first flower. This shaped flower is like a tulip, pretty easy. I'm gonna cut it out. you can see I made a pretty tulip. Now I can take and do the same thing with a different color and make another color tulip. So I wanna use this paper. I can just find the color area that I like, cut a strip, cut it in half. Now I have two pieces of paper that I can make tulips on. I can make that center upside down B and then connect it on the ends. Now, another flower that you could do is you could make a circle that takes up the whole piece of paper and then cut this out. Once you cut it out, you can go in and you can cut a small triangle, just like how we did the bird's wings every so often, rotating my paper as I do this. And you don't want that cut too deep because the paper will tear. And you can make as many of these cuts as you want to. And that will make a different style flower. Now, once you've done this, you can use a scrap piece of paper from the other color. So I'm gonna need a cool piece of paper scrap. Here we go. And you can cut a shape. It could be a square, a rectangle, a little circle, or just, an organic shape and you can make a center for your flower like this. Once you have designed enough flowers for your background, then put those off to the side. And the next thing I'm gonna show you how to make is a butterfly. So for a butterfly, you're gonna choose which color you want your butterfly to be. So my bird is in the cool colors and my flowers are cool and warm. I think I'm gonna make a butterfly in my warm colors this time. So the first thing you wanna do is cut a section of your paper and you want your paper to be in the shape of a square. So I'm gonna cut this down so I make a square. 
I'm gonna fold it so the pretty side is on the inside. I'm gonna put my fold on the left-hand side. And I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna start. So this is my folded side. I'm gonna start down from the top, making a little mark. And I'm going to draw a loop that comes up all the way around and back in again. Remember, this is the folded side. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna make a loop that goes out and around. And then you wanna bring it back up again. You wanna make sure that it comes up at the bottom, not straight across. And then go ahead while it's folded, I'm gonna cut it out. And it doesn't matter if you cut right on the pencil line. When I'm done and I open it up, you'll have a butterfly shape. You can decide whether you want this direction or this direction. If it did not dip in in these two areas here, you just can close it back up and cut that in a little bit more. And then to create the body, we can just use our marker and draw that once we glue it down. So now I've got a butterfly and I have some flowers. I'm gonna zoom out and put all my pieces together here so you can see what we're gonna do next. I've got all of my pieces now. I've got my background paper. I have my bird. I have my flowers and my butterfly. So now what I'm going to do is first glue my little center down on the back of my flower. So getting my glue stick, I'm gonna set my small piece right actually on top of my glue stick. I'm gonna slide my finger around, folding that piece, press it down. And then I'm going to decide where my placement is going to go for everything. So I've got my beautiful bird and she could be flying toward the ground or up in the air. She can be a little higher. It's really up to you where you want to place your pictures, but I wouldn't glue anything down until you kind of have the placement. Now you'll notice my stem is kind of long. So I'm going to lower my flower down a little lower so that my flower shows up. And I'm going to have to decide which flower is going to go where. So since I have two blue and one orange, I'm going to put them this way. And then I have my butterfly. So I have to figure out where I want my butterfly floating and which direction is floating the same direction as the bird or maybe the opposite way. Maybe I'll put the butterfly this way. So once I have everything placed down, I don't want to glue on top of this background paper. I want to glue on my work area. So I'm always moving my glue away from my actual picture. And I'm just gonna glue each item down one by one. It doesn't really matter which order you glue them into, as long as you have your placement where you want them to go. So once I have everything glued down, we will draw the final part of our butterfly. So I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna lower my flower so that it shows underneath my big, beautiful bird. Now I'm gluing my bird, I'm gonna move it over onto my work area and place some glue on the shoulder, on the head, on the beak, and I don't want to get my glue too close to the edge because I don't want it to leave a mark on my paper. So I'm on the tip, a little bit on that back wing. And because this is watercolor paper, you notice I'm putting a nice thick coat of glue. And I'm going to kind of hover my bird over my picture until I'm happy with where I'm setting it down. I'm going to place it down and for my final part of my project, by the way, close up your glue stick and put the cap back on. I always twist it down first. Now for my final part, I'm going to draw my butterflies pattern. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline 
the edge of the wing. Now, since I did a kind of dot to dot pattern on my bird, I'm going to match it. But on my original picture, I just did a straight outline. And then I'm going to make my body. So I'm just going to go in here and kind of color the center. And I'm going to make my antennas come up onto the background paper. You can make straight antennas or curly. And then I like to make my butterfly look like it's flying. So I'm going to make some dotted lines. And for your final part of your project, if you want to, you can go in and outline your flowers. That makes them kind of stand out so I can outline the edges. Or you could follow the pattern I did before, which was a dot to dot pattern. And you can add some little wrinkles in the petals if you want to. And outline my tulips. So I hope you had fun today. I really want to see what you came up with. Will you have your parents help you take a picture of your artwork with maybe their phone and then email it to me at rtorres at lcusd.net. I cannot wait to see what you've been working on. I hope you had fun making our blooming bird. I'll see you for our next lesson. Have a great day.